Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is Sunday, November the 9th, 2014. Armed Forces Day is coming up. And in honor of Armed Forces Day, we have a minister preaching today. He's Pastor Pollock's nephew, Coleman Gracie, G-R-A-C-I. He's the son of Pastor Pollock's sister. He's been in the Green Berets, he's been in Afghanistan, he's been served in um, Iraq. And now he's called to be a chaplain. He's going to be an army chaplain, <laughs> called by God. He's giving the sermon today. This is the theme today is God of justice and love. You illumine our way through life with the words of your son. Give us the light we need. And this is in honor of armed services today. We're giving out flags to everybody. We're happy to have you worship with us. We believe that Jesus Christ is present with us. He's in his robe and his sandals. He comes in with us. He it's around the altar with us. We have the service of the word today. Sometimes we have the service of the word, word and sacrament. This is what God sends us in the Bible. We worship what, him and through the Bible, he sends us love letters. We read the love letters from him as he loves us. The chaplain is uh, here today, Coleman Gracie, the nephew of Pastor Pollock, our pastor. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. When we have communion, we believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ. We believe that the, he is present in the body and the blood, that he did this for us. He died on the cross to save us from sin, death, and the grave. He redeemed us. We're happy. We're joyful. We don't feel the guilt. We are contrite. We uh, have Jesus with us every day. We have our organist is Greg Nolte. The choir director is Vicki Perks. We have special music from Vicki Perks. We invite you to come to worship anytime at St. John's Church. We have his virtual presence. Jesus promised that when two or three are gathered together in his name, that he is here with us. So if you gather together in his name, if you confess Jesus is your savior, invite him to come into your heart. Invite him to say the prayer just right now. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and you're born again every day. As Jesus becomes a part of you, you take communion. He Died on the cross, one of the reasons he died was to leave himself, to leave Holy Communion, so he could be with us to the end of the world. He said he'll never leave us, always be there to give us what we need. We should keep asking, even if we get no's, we keep asking. Jesus is with us, and when he is with us, we have the joy. There's no other joy that can compare to it. So we do ask you to come worship with us. Our Yuletide Festival is coming up this month, November the 20th, 21st, 22nd. We have a, an auction, we have dinners, 20th, 21st, and breakfast with Santa is the 22nd. So call the church, 323-7508, area code 937, and you will be able to find out anything you need about the Yuletide Festival. We do use it uh, as fellowship and raising funds for the church. You'll see just a few uh, people here front rather than the regular choir because it's the service of the word today. This is uh, worship service that uh, is November the 9th, 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Armed Services Day will be the uh, Tuesday. We honor those who have served our country in armed services. We appreciate especially the one who is talking to us today, the Green Beret. He'll explain what he has done in his call now to be a chaplain in the Green Beret. The flowers today are from the Peer family in honor of Tara Anderson's birthday. Pastor and Gina in honor of all veterans, in honor of those who have served and are currently serving in the military. Cindy and Les Peters Pearson and family in honor of Becky Bishop's birthday. In loving memory of Bill and Barbara DeSellum's anniversary. So we have those things have to look forward to today, the opening hymn, Come that we, love, we That Love the Lord, the Apostolic Reading, the Kyrie, the Hymn of Praise, the Prayer of the Day, the First Reading, the Psalm, the Second Reading, the Gospel Acclamation, the Holy Gospel, the Sermon by Staff Sergeant Colvin Gracie of Green Beret, who's now studying to be a chaplain, Lutheran chaplain, we have the Apostles' Creed, the Offering, Prayers of Intercession, and we'll have the Dismissal with the hymn of 632, then uh, we'll be dismissed to do God's work. Well, this 
listening now to the organist, Greg Nolte, playing the offertory. Beautiful organ. And you're looking at the statue of Jesus. He's prophet, priest, and king, and he's with us today. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Zion.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. today who read the Old Testament and New Testament. And we'll have our psalmody in between and the pastor will read the gospel.
Psalm 70. that you're here worshiping with us today and you have the pleasure of hearing Sergeant Coleman Gracie preach the sermon. He's a Green Beret. We're honoring veterans. Veterans Day is the second. Uh, it's Tuesday. It's uh, Tuesday after today. Today is Sunday. And uh, Veterans Day is Tuesday.
November and the 25th, Tuesday the 25th, we will have our Thanksgiving worship service, 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Again, as I have said, uh, invite your friends and neighbors or some congregations that are not having services. Uh, so I can find a neighbor or friend or family member who would like to worship, celebrate Thanksgiving in a worship service. So the 25th at 6.30, we will celebrate Thanksgiving. As now that you give your attention.
Grace to you and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's once again my privilege to join you all here on this Veterans Day weekend. I want to thank all of you for keeping me and my brother in your all's prayers. Uh, both of us have recently returned to the point in the past two months uh, safely. And uh, that is in no small part to the prayers of this congregation and many other congregations around the country. And I sincerely thank you for that. And I ask that you continue to pray for all the men and women who are serving around the world right now, whether combating terrorism or uh, aiding uh, in Africa or just wherever they are, they're away from their families and such, or in harm's way. Continue to pray for them, continue to pray for God's grace on them. That is the greatest gift that can be given to them, and if there's nothing higher that can be asked for, for them. What are we to make of today's lessons? If you're into writing novels, what Paul writes in his letter to the Thessalonians can certainly serve as background for an eschatological novel. And I wanted to throw that word out there. It's a big word for the end times. You can take liberties with what Paul writes and create your own fantastical ideas about how the world will end. Though there may exist some shreds of truth within the novels of that genre, if we believe those novels to be true, we miss the intent and the gospel in Paul's message. Paul is not writing to the Thessalonians to give them so much a blueprint or an op order, as we use in the military, on how Jesus will return. He is writing to assure them that those who belong to Christ belong to Him eternally, and that Christ will return. And upon His return, He will revive those who have died in faith and raise them everlasting life. He is writing to encourage them in the hope that is found in Jesus Christ alone. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, do not be uninformed that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. The Thessalonians apparently struggled with what was to come after death. And Paul writes to them, do not be uninformed. Those words written nearly 2,000 years ago are still as pertinent to us and effectual to us today. We are not those others. We are those who have been baptized into Christ. Because of this baptism, we have hope. As Paul writes in Romans, we have been baptized into Christ buried into his death, that we might be united with him in a resurrection like his. This hope is what Paul exhorts the Thessalonians to cling to, and that same hope is what the Word exhorts us to hold on to today. Do not fall victim to temptation to speculate about the end times. The speculation is precisely what Paul is addressing. By assuring the Thessalonians, they have no reason to speculate. Instead, they are to have confidence in the sure, solid hope that is in Christ Jesus. Speculation fills us with doubt and leads us astray from what God has proclaimed to us through His Word. We are not to fill in the, in the gaps with dates and details from our own contrivance. This is what Jesus warns about in the Gospel lesson. We know neither the hour nor the day. Instead, we are to hear the Word in its fullness, pointing to the promise of the resurrection, and that our hope rests completely in Jesus Christ. We do not speculate about who is in and who is out. We are not the college football playoff system. Instead, who is in and who is out is dependent upon the Lord, for that is His work. But we are to recognize the warning given to us. Not all will be prepared. 
Not all are wise. Not all will be found faithful when Christ returns. Furthermore, we are warned to be wise, to stand on what we do know, to believe, taught, and confessed throughout the ages, what Christ has revealed, and not on what we can fear. We know neither the day nor the hour of Christ's return, but we know that He will return. Paul knew this well. As we approach Advent, this theme is to be the focus of our worship. Christ will return. And this, this season celebrates the preparation of his return. Paul presses the Thessalonians to encourage one another in the knowledge that Christ will return. And when he returns, we will be raised to new life with him. For Paul, these words of hope, words upon which we, these are words of hope, words upon which we are to build our lives. The task that Paul sets before the Thessalonians then is the same task that we as Christians today have. We are to encourage one another in the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. So what does that encouragement look like? Encouragement comes as the word itself proclaimed to us as we gather here, spoken and sung out in the liturgy and hymns, read aloud here in the scriptures. Encouragement is in the words of confession and absolution. The words proclaim to us that if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Encouragement comes in the words that Pastor spoke to us. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Encouragement comes in the waters of baptism. And not just for the person who is baptized, but for the whole community of believers, as we bear witness that the water and the word claim this person as Christ's own as he has claimed, claimed each of you. We affirm that promise given to us in our baptism in the words of the creeds. We are his. We are sealed with the, Christ, the cross of Christ forever. Encouragement comes here, in the body and blood of Christ, as we gather around his table, proclaiming his life-giving death and his glorious resurrection. In this bread and wine, we are given a foretaste of the feast to come. Our hope is manifested in this sacrament, as Christ literally says, This is my body, given for you. This is my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Christ, through his word, is literally saying, What I have done for you, is all you will ever be. Encouragement comes in the form of a beloved community, the fellowship of believers, of words of friends during the deployment, of the assurance of their prayers, praying for me, praying for my teammates, praying for my family, praying for my friends. Prayer reminds me that the Christian life is not done individually. Encouragement comes in the form of fellowship with other believers, whether in Sunday school, throughout the week, sharing meals. It comes as a reminder, encouragement comes as a reminder that we are a body of believers, that we do not do this alone. We bear each other's burdens. We grieve with those who are grieving. We rejoice with those who are rejoicing. When we pray, we pray for the whole church, believers far and near, for all around the world, for all those around the world who Christ has claimed as his own. Encouragement comes from the saints who have gone on before us, who have given their lives in service to Christ, to the proclamation of his gospel. 
There are many saints around the world who are currently undergoing persecution for their faith in Christ. Yet even in their deaths, the hope in Christ rings even more strongly. We just celebrated All Saints Day last weekend and remembered the saints great and small. And as my word of encouragement on that, I've seen uh, the church being persecuted in the Middle East. And I have friends who have seen it around the world, Vietnam, China, other places where the church gathers underground. They meet in remote locations. They don't have the freedom to gather as we do. And I ask that you continue to pray for them and also to continue to join here together around the word and around the sacraments together as fellowship of believers because it is a privilege for us and encourage one another in doing that. Finally, encouragement comes in the promises of the word that the bridegroom will come, that injustice will come to an end, that we will be taken with Christ where there is no more suffering, no more pain, no more death, no more loss. We will always be with the Lord. Until that final day comes, encourage one another with this hope. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. and Linda Smith are our ushers. They're bringing forward the offering plates and then they're giving the members an opportunity to make their um, offering and they will carry the offering plates forward and they will be received by the acolyte. This is part of the offering service of the church. We have just had our profession of faith. We have stood and professed our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus comes into our heart. We're born again every day through this. And we invite you all to pray this prayer to Jesus that you have repented, you love God, you love your neighbor, and ask him to come in your heart. He's standing at the door and knocking. He's waiting to come in. And your life will be filled with joy. you have eternal life. He has many means of making himself close to you. One of the greatest means is the sacrament of Holy Communion. We invite you to come every Sunday. 8 o'clock, 10.30, also Wednesday night at 6.30 for the service of Holy Communion. When Jesus Christ is real, he proclaims that when we receive his body and blood, that we
we receive eternal life. You see now the acolytes and you see the ushers coming forward. We invite you to come to Springfield, Ohio, St. John's Lutheran Church. Call 323-7508. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, comfort, strengthen, and keep you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our worship of God and help by the angels past, hymn number 632. Prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer very powerful as we are members of the body of Christ and I pray this together. This hymn, O God, our help in ages past, again written by Isaac Watts. We have two hymns today written by the same hymn writer, Isaac Watts. This was played on the radio by the BBC as soon as World War II was declared. It's known as a war hymn, O God, our help in ages past, and as he will help us during the wars. It was later sung during the funeral services of Winston Churchill. Very powerful hymn, English hymn, 1719, as it was. watching St. John's broadcast on YouTube. You can turn on any time to YouTube. If you just click on Google, Google, write in YouTube, St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. You can show this yourself and you can share it. This can be your means of evangelism. Think of this. You can help someone else obtain eternal life. It's very simple worship service. 
My church offers a Christian school program. For more information, you may call the school office 325 4311. School office is 325 4311. Tune in next Sunday or anytime. Thank you for joining our worship services for today. I'm your announcer, Dr. Sally Abbott, and the Fox is your uh, videographer, and James Pumpers is your assistant with videography. We hope and we pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you this day and all your days. We pray for you, continue to pray for us. We pray for our salvation, we pray that we'll all be together in eternal life with our Savior, our Lord, God, Father, Holy Spirit. Amen.